So today what we're going to look at is how to use Horizon Apps to make our uh, basketball game backboard design, which will be later laser engraved. So to get started, you know, it should be uh, um, start out in classroom in your class. For this one, I had Mrs. Greg make a dummy account and add me as a student so I can actually go through it the same way as you. Um, if you have not already added Horizon Apps to your favorites or have not logged in here, um, I know with my classes I always try to do that right off the bat, but we're going to go in uh, this way just in case. Instructions explaining all this, but um, for now we go ahead to this link. And once it pops up, this is through the county, so you don't have to type in the whole at FCPS stuff. Your username will be your normal username. Again, leave off. Do not put on at FCPS, just, just the first part of it. And look at that, I spelled my name wrong. I'm too busy talking here. Um, and your, you know, your first initial, then your last name or part of it, depending on how long it is. And your three numbers is what you should have. The teacher uh, login is a little bit different. Whatever your password is, it is most likely FCS in your lunch number. We'll do login. And what should come up here is all the programs that uh, are associated with being in our classes. So. You should have um, Adobe Suite. You should have four different app drive file streams, um, Autodesk Suite, the Corel Suite, and some general stuff down here. But first thing that we want to do is we're going to go to this Apps for Drive File Stream and click on it. And once it decides to pop up here, Let's see. Um, I'm wondering if maybe it has me logged in. Um, what should happen is a window should pop up, and we'll find out if something went wrong here in a second. But a separate window should pop up. It'll look like your Google login pretty much because it is it is Google. You'll need to put in your entire email address, so your username plus the at fcpsk12.net, and then your um, password, and then... Once you submit it, it should pop up with a little window that we can just close. Uh, but let's see. I'm going to go ahead and continue on and see see what happens here. Because with nothing showing up, um, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm already logged in here. This should also pop up after you've uh, finished logging in and closed a separate little pop-up that kind of gives you an overview of the program. Um, this is going to allow you, you know, so I'm on a Chromebook, which normally doesn't have this type of setup. This is what you would normally see on a Windows machine. So what I'm currently doing is I am hitting a server at the school board office that is running Windows and uh, you know we're, we're going to access a Windows based program through the Chromebook remotely. So that's the whole reason for this. And uh, we're going to need this here in a second but let me go um, back to you should have this little tab on the side. If you don't see that you may just see this little tab, and you can move that up and down in case it gets in the way. But we're going to click on that, and we're going to scroll down here. You want to find, it looks like a pencil, Corel Draw 2018. We're going to click that to launch it. Um, this little window is going to open up for sure. Down here, it's kind of hard to see, but it says skip or continue. We're going to skip. You may need to zoom out to actually see that but um, I was able to at least get in there and so here we are we're actually going to run Corel Draw which again is a Windows based program through the Chromebook which is kind of cool so we're going to be able to do things we normally would never be able to do on our Chromebooks here this way uh, again this might get in the way you can slide that up or down to and get it out of your way um, we're going to go back to classroom and if this is still up, just back out of it. All right, so I have a basketball game section in here. It should be something along those lines, depending on whose class you're in. But um, there's going to be a basketball game backboard design. 
Now, just to show you this, if I click on it, Google has absolutely no idea what to do with a Corel draw file. So this is normal. We're not going to go in that way, but uh, you might run into that. Um, if you click on the drop down, there's different stuff here. That's not what we want either. So how we're going to do this is, let me see. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see how this works. I'm going to try this first. So clicking on class drive folder. Um, we'll see if it goes the way that I want it to. It looks like it's going to open up in Chrome, which is not exactly what I was hoping for, but that, that works out. It's I'll show you why here once it actually pops up. So in your Google Drive, you have a section called Classroom that's automatically made for you. You don't make it. At, whenever you enter a teacher's classroom, this automatically pops up. Every class that you have is going to show up whatever it's called and again Mrs. Craig made me a test class so I could be the student so that's why this is showing up so it might say like you know inventions innovations fifth period something like that but um since that did show up like I said that actually is not a terrible thing at this point I'm gonna go back to the VMware Horizon <clears throat> I'm gonna click on that little tab to pull these back out this window to explorer i want to open that click on it to open it and we should just get uh, this back i can put this back in by clicking on that little tab <clears throat> there we go my drive you want my drive um you're gonna find your section that's classroom because we know that it's in classroom classroom you know, you should have way less stuff than I do here. If you have tons of old classes, if you need them, you could. I just created an archive folder, and I just straight dropped them into there. Um, if that's not the case, just find our class or possibly delete them. Just make sure you don't delete from the classes you need. <clears throat> Mine is Craig Test 1, 2, 3. And here's what I really wanted to get to. Um, here is the student backboard template. Um, it should say your name dash student backboard template. So we're going to open that up. And here it is. Uh, nice thing about Corel Draw is there's a hint section. So anytime I click on a tool, it'll show me hints and explain what that tool does. Um, you can click on this hints anytime you want. There's two little arrows here over to the right hand side. If I click on those, it'll hide it. But if I want that back, I just click hints again and it pops right back up. <clears throat> okay, so this is our template. This is the actual size of your backboard. You can see our zero here, our zero here, which makes this the origin. Um, the whole thing is five and three fourths of an inch long. I can also see that right here, and it's four inches tall, the exact size of the backboard. <clears throat> um, I have instructions over here for you. Your backboard design must be black and white. That is very important for us at this point, not shades of gray. And of course, it needs to be school appropriate. The design must be kept within the guidelines, these little dashed lines. To the left, the outer corners are marked with red arrows. So the dashed lines are our guidelines. Um, the red arrows, just to really make sure that's what we're talking about. Can't really miss it. The hoop's going to be glued on right here, so I just wanted to show that. And um, we want to keep your design within this little area here, okay? <clears throat> you could potentially just type stuff with text. Uh, like normal programs, all your different fonts, your sizes. Um, you can take the regular old arrow here and you can drag this around you should depending on the setting be able to size stuff like that um, so that is an option you could and if I want it out of there I can click on it and since <laughs> delete I'm used to my Windows machine here you could draw things there's different drawing tools I don't want that, but 
little drop down here. There's different tools for pens and lines and rectangles and circles and polygons and you name it. Um, if you'd like to go that route or, you know, what I'm going to do is import an image from the internet. So, um, I'm just going to open up a separate tab. I'm going to go to Google and just for kicks, uh, how about Snoopy? <clears throat> now, if you're at school and you do this, you might really be limited and locked down on, on the images that pop up. Um, with the, uh, <laughs> I don't know why that went to peanuts.com. I thought I clicked images. Let's try that one more time. Images. And here's all sorts of images. Um, you know, the differences between the teacher settings and the student settings, I'm not exactly sure, but one thing that you might try, if it really doesn't seem to be showing up with much and you feel like it's something school appropriate, try going into settings and do advanced search. And the one thing that you may want to try <clears throat> is usage rights. If it'll let you, I'd try all, because I think it defaults to like Creative Commons. And we'll talk more about that later. But if we go to all and then type in your search and up here and search it, you might get more more options. Maybe, again, I have a teacher account, so I can't really answer that question completely. But um, <clears throat> don't copy and paste. When we talk more about graphics, don't copy and paste. All right, Find something that makes you happy. Open the image. Uh, what you can do that's fine would be to right click and uh, I would want to save image as. Please pay attention to where you're saving things to. Don't just drop it any old place. Don't just hit save. You know, name it something. Put it in your Google Drive somewhere where you want it. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll, for mine, I'd want it in seventh grade. And it's taking a minute here. You know, put it somewhere very specific. Um, actually, for our class, to be totally honest, for the tech class, what would be a good idea is go to that classroom, find our class, or in this case, the, like I said, the Craig test one, two, three, and save it right in there and name it something that you know what it is. A lot of times these pictures are just super long strings of letters and numbers. Give it a name so you know what it is. Um, and like I said, that, that's probably our best bet for everyone across the board. Go into classroom, find your class, and save it in there. That is a great idea. <laughs> so there's my Snoopy. I am not going to copy. Like I said, don't copy and paste. And there's reasons for that we'll discuss at a later point in time. Back to VM Horizon. Um, it should still have this up here. And uh, I'm going to go to Import. So. If I go to open, it's going to open a Corel draw file, and that's not a Corel draw file. I want to bring an image. I need to go to import or control I. So we're going to import this. Now, this time, again, remember this is this is a server at the school board office, so we need to go to that Google Drive file stream. We've got to go in again on my drive, go down to classroom. I'm going to find my class, in this case, Craig test one, two, three, and here's my Snoopy drawing, and I'm going to import it. You'll see this. If I just click, it'll put it in at whatever size it is, and I can see, you know, right below the little cursor here, it says it could be 12 inches wide and 14 inches tall. I don't want it that tall. <laughs> if you slide somewhere in your screen, click and hold and drag. Um, it's going to be tougher if you don't have a mouse, but you know, and if you click the thing and it gets huge, just use these little black nodes on the sides, the corner ones specifically, and you can resize this. Um, make sure it's no larger than those guidelines that I put in there. <clears throat> you can even use the arrows to s stick it exactly where you want it. One thing in this program, too, if I want to make sure it's dead center, I could do a couple different things. <clears throat> If you go over to the rulers on the screen, click, hold, and drag, um, I can drag out lines, and I can set them um, 
and drag stuff to them. That's an option to get rid of them. I just go back to here. Or I know that this whole screen is 5.75 wide. Uh, you might want a calculator on this one, but I already know. Um, this is just the size of the image. Don't mess with that. <clears throat> you could even lock it so it doesn't get crazy. My X, half of 5 and 3 quarters is 2 and 7 eighths. And here's the beauty of this program. I can do 2 space 7 slash 8. I could do 0.875, but I can do that, hit enter, <clears throat> and it'll accept that. And I'll put it right in the center. So that's one really nice thing about the higher end programs. And uh, there we go. Your image must be black and white. If it's not black and white, there are different tools in here that you could go in and, and make adjustments um, to change it. Um, you could even, you know, but seventh grade at this point, when we're not into graphics yet, just find a picture that is black and white and make everyone's life easy. Or if you're drawing or writing, just black text, black lines, black shapes. Okay. Um, at this point, I would go, this is not Google, remember, it's not going to save automatically. we got to go and we got to just hit save. Okay. We already opened the template, so it's already there. Just hit save. Um, I can X out the program over here once I'm happy with it. Uh, and it has now saved. You're going to see this backup of your stuff, and that's fine. You can ignore that. And when you submit this, don't use the backup. Use the one that does not save backup. Um, that's just a normal thing with uh, Windows. <clears throat> I'm going to minimize this. I will not need Horizonware anymore, and this is an extremely important step. Go up to Open Menu and log out. <clears throat> Only so many people can be in a program at a time, and if you don't log out, there might be people across the whole county that can't get in to do their classwork. So please make sure you always log out of that program. If you just close the window, it doesn't log out, so you've got to actually go and log out. Um, I'm going to go back to classroom. Okay, so this is my updated file. It's the same one that was there. I just saved over top of it. Um, all you're going to need to do is go into view assignment. And I got a little lag time here today. Here we go. So I've went in, I've, you know, taking care of that yeah if you want to leave a comment at anything you can put in your comments here oftentimes we will leave you comments the same way and they'll pop up here but um, all we got to do now is turn in so once you've opened that adjusted it added what you want to it it's black and white it's within the margins that we gave you <clears throat> just click turn in turn in and just like that you are done We'll have your file. We'll check it out and let you know if there's any issues or anything that needs uh, adjusted. But um, <laughs> I don't know why it's not turning in here. Yeah, that should say that it's done, but, you know, whatever. Google's weird sometimes. Make sure you actually click turn in. Make sure that it shows that it's turned in. And I, I really don't know what's going on here. And I'm going to take a quick look before I sign off of this video just to make sure and uh, if it's still shown as a sign for some reason that wasn't submitting if this is still bright colored and not gray it hasn't been submitted so um, I'm not gonna fight that while I'm trying to show you in the video but make sure it gets submitted and that it you know you could even go into uh, view your work and make sure it's not still shown up as something you owe but um, that's it, folks, and if you have any questions, uh, email your teacher, and and we'll be healthy, happy to help you out. So, best of luck.